Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 4 of my full Platinum walkthrough for Elden Ring. We are in Weeping Peninsula, that's what we're doing this video. It's a fairly long one, this one, but we managed to get the whole area done. Uh, so this is exactly where we start, uh, ended off, should I say, at the end of episode 3. Uh, we are at the south point of Limgrave, we're just going to cross the Bridge of Sacrifice, and then we're going to do the whole of the Peninsula of Weeping. <laughs> uh, right. This first bit we don't act you don't actually have to do, but I'm just showing you where it is in case you want to catch any of the little uh, side stories that are going on. So we don't need this for anything. So you can speak to Irina here. Uh, she will ask you if you can d deliver a letter for her. We are going to the castle anyway. So if you want to, then just say yes and you'll get Irina's letter. Uh, I'm not going to do, sh do the whole quest, but I'll show you and explain what you need to do if you want to do the rest of it. Uh, and that's it for now with Irina and yeah say goodbye to her as well <laughs> uh, yeah and then we're going to continue down uh, just heading south there's no map as of yet so I won't show you exactly where I am yet uh, but it will make sense because it's pretty much just one path all the way south so we've got a few soldiers here and this is kind of what's going on there's a, a war a battle going on down here um, we've got the giants who are on the side of the soldiers the Godric soldiers so uh, just take all of these down. It's like they're having a bit of a breather, actually, the way they're kind of positioned. Uh, and it, it will make sense in a moment. You're going to see that the enemies will change. So we've got the tree and beast. Are these actually the Godric ones? I'm not actually quite sure which are which yet with regards to uh, the soldiers. <laughs> the lore and stuff is all over the place still. Uh, so a strip of white flesh there. You get those usually from crabs and things like that. Uh, it, you can use it to craft uh, medicinal things. So it was a one-off, so that's why I put it in the top corner. Watch out for the dogs, because they are well camouflaged around here. And there you go, that's how we know we're clear. Some Lord Swan bolts. And then in here is the Morning Star, if you want to use that as a weapon. And then some Golden Moons over here. And then you can see these enemies here, they're kind of... I don't quite know how to describe them really they have tails they kind of fly but not really and they do they have large axes they're a bit of a, a weird one really they kind of glide so they're a bit like chickens in that they can kind of fly but not really they just do it over short distances uh, they don't do it much but they can get close to you pretty quickly uh, smithing stone two there make sure you grab that We'll be using some smithing stones later to upgrade our uh, Uchi Katana. Uh, so still heading south along the main road. You're going to find an Ash of War Mighty Shot. This you will obviously use on a bow if you wanted to change that. Not that we use the bow much. We do use it occasionally, mainly just to get rid of those fire traps that we see. And then if you keep heading, you're going to see a big wall across here. That's big, uh, got a hole in it. And a Grace Point and a Merchant as well. So remember this grace point, we're going to come up here, uh, come, teleport back here quite often. So that's where we've come down, that s southern thing there. You can just see the map just a bit further south of where we are. We're not going to get the map just yet though. So if you speak to him, he will sell you uh, the stone sword key is what we're going to buy from him. Yeah, obviously buy whatever the hell you like, but stone sword key. Uh, and I'm going to grab a smithing stone too. It's not necessary, but you might as well. It might get us uh, that step closer to upgrading sooner. Uh, yeah, if it is night time, uh, the gap in the wall that we saw, the broken part of the wall, there will be one of the shade bosses, the night... Oh, I forget what they're called. The night knights, basically. The, the black ones on the horses, the black horses. Uh, if it's night time, if he's the day, nothing... If it's daytime, he won't be there. So if you want to avoid him, just change it to day. Right, so I'm going to use the spirit spring here. And jump all the way up here, and we're going to get a shell, a giant turtle shell, which is actually a shield, it's a weapon. <laughs> uh, so if you're using shields, it might be a funny one to use for a bit, who knows. But the main reason we're doing that is to get use the shortcut to get up here, because we're going to go in that tower just to the left of us in a moment, that one. Just going to grab some starlight shards, so whenever you see one of these satellite looking things, you'll just see it here, there we go. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a Starlight Shard on the front of it. Again, this is, these are one-time use items that you can crack, and your FP will fill up slowly. So if you run out of Cerulean Tears, then um, 
you can crack one of those in emergencies. Only use them really in emergencies. Um, yeah, because they're, they're quite rare, so you're not going to be able to get them get them very often. A few wolves here. There's quite a few wolves actually. There's one lying down over there, so that's four or five. They're all around this tower. There's a white one at the front. And that's surrounded. So five, six, seven, eight. I think there's another one yet. So there's nine, maybe even ten. I might have missed one, who knows. Just keep an eye out for them. They are everywhere. I didn't get the swirl, so there's going to be one somewhere. I presume. But it doesn't get me, so it's fine. Anyway, so these towers you can't just enter. Uh, you need to kind of unlock them. So what you have to do is go up to that uh, that that book there, that tome, and uh, activate it. And then you got to kill these tortoises. I know you said I know I said you shouldn't kill the tortoises, and you're a horrible person if you do. But these aren't real ones; they're spirits. So I kind of they're spells, aren't they? They're not real. I think I hope. <laughs> but either way, there's no other way around it. So the third, the, the first and second are always in the same place. Third one is also always in the same place, but he is invisible. He's in that lake. Just look for the movement in the water. Um, and that's it. It will unlock the door once you've done that. It's not very nice, but there we go. Aridiuses. Aridius? Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, rise. There's quite a few of these rises. Um, they're always to do with magic. So it's something we're going to want to go into. Uh, one of them holds uh, actually holds one of the legendary spells. And this one holds a memory stone, so that's another spell slot for us. We will now have four if you pur purchase that one from uh, from Roundtable Hall. Don't worry if you didn't. In the next video, kind of near the beginning of the next video, is when you will be guaranteed to go to uh, Roundtable Hall. Uh, we won't be using that extra slot at this point either, so don't worry. I'm not going to fully upgrade. The, well, it's not fully upgrade, but upgrade to the sword to its maximum potential at this point either because you might not be there or have gone or be able to get there but at the beginning of the next video you will be able to right head further south staying on the top part part here you can find another grace and there's kind of where we are coming a bit no we're not going south we're going back north again sorry we're heading north again I'm not quite sure. I've not figured these out yet. There's there's a few places where these are a thing. You've got these... Whatever they I'm not quite sure what these enemies are. Um, but they do rush you pretty quickly. And there's always the glow in the middle. And you've got the sort of pits. You see the glow, purple glow on all the pits. Uh, so when you move towards this, you can get an enemy appear. So, yeah, make sure you clear out most of the small ones first. Because uh, you, you want to get rid of this guy pretty quickly. And, uh, and then all the purple disappears. I don't know the law behind it. I don't know if it leads to anything in the future. But we didn't actually need to do that. <laughs> but we're just killing the enemies as we go to get a few runes as we go past. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, you don't want to walk into it. So you've got the gravity stone fan here. That's a random drop. Um, yeah, it's gravity. We're using gravity spells, so great. <laughs> Uh, ultimately, they don't seem to do it. It feels like something's going to happen when you kill that guy. It's all going to... You get, I don't know, an item or something, but nothing happens. Anyway, you go to the north point. There's the, the bridge, so we're back all the way up at the top of the north now on the uh, east side of the peninsula. And find a stone sword key. And that's all we need from this, uh, this side. So we're going to walk back to our merchant down here. So always come back to this one, the rampart, Castle Morn Ramparts... Uh, Grace will be using this quite often. So again, if it is night time as you ride towards this, one of the, the large knights will uh, will come through the gap. Uh, fight him if you want. Go for it. Use the. It's actually fairly simple um, if you use the gravity spell. Uh, so down here there is a giant. You can't make him out just yet. He's he's stood in front of that castle. He's got a huge bow. He's a huge giant, uh, and he is going to be firing arrow, arrows at you. There you go. Uh, so stay up on this top side and look for the golden seed. Just be careful, he shouldn't be able to hit you from up here. Because his, uh, his arrow will dip and um, hit the wall. So grab the golden seed. 
I am ducking. Just I'm just testing it. I, I do a really bad dodge here as well. <laughs> what the hell was that? Anyway, uh, I was just waiting because then we're going to uh, go back. And we're going to hide behind this plinth here, which holds the uh, the map. You can do it in either order, to be honest. Or kill the giant first and get both afterwards. So this is the map for the whole of the Weeping Peninsula. I can't open it up yet because we're in combat. I'm just waiting for him to uh, fire an arrow. There we go. He's very rare that he gets this far past. So uh, don't ask what I'm doing here. <laughs> I jumped off the off torrent twice there. For some reason, run has always been circle in every Dark Souls game ever. But for some reason, all of a sudden I just thought it was L3. So I kept jumping off the horse. Uh, yeah, anyway. Keep using cover and just make your way south towards him. He's not dangerous when you're up next to close at all. So wait for one arrow shot and then wait for him to start loading another arrow. This means he's committed to the arrow. There we go. It means he's committed to firing an arrow. If you get behind him, you're completely safe. So just hack at his legs with a spell and you'll kill him really quick. He's actually got half health anyway. And that's him down. Uh, I don't think these are random drop. I've not put them in, but you're going to get five great arrows potentially as well. So if you didn't get the map or the golden seed, go back and get those. The rest of the stuff around here, we, the poison swamp, there's nothing in there. There's nothing else around here. <laughs> of course, by the end of this video, we will have completely finished Weeping Peninsula, so you can go and explore and do whatever the hell you like. Uh, we won't be back here. So, uh, yeah, actually, it's will tell a lie. We will be very briefly back here to uh, to use the giant tortoise bell thing. But that'll make sense at the end. Right, we're going into Castle Morn. Uh, there's a legendary weapon in here. There is a not a missable boss fight, but an optional boss fight in here. Uh, you get the the weapon from the boss actually. So use your seed. You should have two at this point, or you may already have two if you went and did that boss that we skipped at the end of the last video. Uh, we will go and do him uh, eventually. The worm boss in the uh, in the catacomb type area, I forget what it's called now, the hero's grave. Um, we will go and do him because he's, he's just quite simple when you, you're a bit more leveled up and it is a, a golden seed, so we will go and do it. Right, and then we we'll go up here. This place is actually really simple. Uh, most enemies don't attack you until you attack them. So there's a dog as, that is moving, there's two others that aren't, so just get rid of the one that is for now. And then just come up here. There's another two dogs up here. There's one that tries to, yeah, sneak attack. And there's going to be a smithing stone too here. So yeah, this is the story that's kind of going on. You will hear it. There's a battle up on those those ramparts up there. Um, there's a whole story with this. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. Uh, but they are under attack from these uh, these flying... Hell beast things. So just slowly, you, you, it's, as long as they don't see you, they won't alert you killing their friends from a distance, apart from that one who did see me apparently. Uh, so yeah, you can just take your time and uh, kill them all off. Wait for the big one, wait till it's clear, till you go for the big one at the top, because he will take a few extra hits. And they do roll up on you pretty quickly and then continue getting rid of all the others so yeah these guys have basically taken this castle these these creatures whereas all the uh, soldiers were kind of pushed out I don't know why I'm going grabbing these butterflies I have no idea I don't use them ever unless you want to craft flaming arrows or something anything that's flaming Speaking of, there's some fire grease. We can add that to our weapon if we need to do fire damage, which will be never. Uh, pumpkin head here. Easy one. Gravity spell twice. And then the normal pebble. We'll take him down. Another one here. Now, if you just carry on up there, there is a ladder up onto the ramparts, but we're going to take a different way round. And there's a smithing stone. One times three. Uh, we're going to get the claymore in a moment, which is a fan favourite weapon, I would say. It's it's a, a heavier sword, a heavier sword that I can use. It's a bit of a slower. It's not as slow as great swords, obviously. 
but again it's not one I will personally use but you may like it so if you're looking for it it's in here in the chest I think the merchant that we just went to was actually selling the claymore as well so there's a free one and I'm going to drop down if you don't actually walk through this door that these guys are supposed to be fighting if you walk through the door they'll start fighting but if you just stay back here they actually don't <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the animation didn't kick in. So that's the thing. That's that's what makes the magic so easy in this game uh, using magic because you can keep your distance for so much of the game because the games are bigger than usually uh, the new the Dark Souls and Bloodborne etc. So you do have a massive tactical advantage in a lot of places. Plus, when they're fighting each other like this, it makes things easier as well. You can let them let it play out if you want, or not. I'm not. I've not got time for that. So if we go down here, there's another couple of the. Uh, what are we calling these things? I don't. I can't quite. They're kind of birds. They've got funny legs as well. Anyway, uh, steel wire torch is a different version of uh, the torch, the regular torch that we use to light areas. Uh, you can actually use it, it has an L2 and you can breathe fire through it, it's kind of cool but it's only very short range it looks cool, you'll want to try it have a look, it looks cool, but apart from that it's nothing you'll ever use in combat, <laughs> it's too slow uh, and probably doesn't do that much damage to be honest uh, Fail Calling Finger Remedy there, that's for co-op, uh, I did explain all of that in the uh, tutorial video in the uh, beginner's guide if you watch that if you didn't and you want to know what's going on, then uh, do watch that. I did recommend it in the first one of these. Right, so this is where that ladder would have brought us up that I mentioned previously. Uh, there is one of the one one of these enemies here that will rush down the stairs as soon as you drop down. Unfortunately, Roxling didn't kill him, so uh, I have to drop down and hit him again. Not that that's a problem, but it's a extra mag magic we'd only use. So there are a couple of proper flying ones up here. You can see them just perched on the wall. They are, if you can get them with a uh, rock sling from here, you probably will be able to. Uh, they are pretty nasty with their with their attacks. One of them just fallen off the wall and died. That's never happened before. I don't know how a flying creature dies, but there you go. Uh, from fall damage, should I say. Uh, yeah, they do shoot sort of two feather, you can see one stuck in my arm, two feather arrows at you at a time so just be careful of that and uh, yeah get the golden rune there we are very close to a grace point you're probably running out of fp at this point i will show you in a moment where it is as i'm trying to move forward there and get the battle started you know so they take damage but it did not work just going to get another couple of smithing stone twos down here There's one behind these barrels. I'm looking at my FP thing. I've got one shot and then I have to reload, but I didn't. <laughs> I had two shots. Uh, didn't get it. Get it. Didn't get that one right. And I am running low myself, so we'll go for a little backstab here. And some smithing stone twos. We need to go to Round Table Hold to use Smithing Stone 2s, but we can use Smithing Stone 1s at the table in the Church of Ella, which we will do. Uh, now that we have the Uchi Katana, I will get enough strength to use it. Um, like I said, we will get the thing that will artificially add dexterity and strength as well in this video. It's going to be up to you whether you use it. It's It makes you take more damage. I'll, that, I'll explain later on, but... Uh, that's the reason why I'm I'm hard upgrading, uh, so you can use the Uchi Katana as well, if you don't want to use the Talisman. Bit of a break there. Uh, so there is a grace point here. If you're not interested in doing the little side story and things like that, then you can use the grace point now. It's I, I'm pretty sure you can't get back. You'd have to come through the, the main gates again, because uh, you can't seem to jump the wall. 
Another bit of a battle here. But there is a sacrificial twig up here as well. Oh, you get given one. Um, the sacrificial twig I don't personally ever use. But it might come in handy. Who knows? Wow, we are getting a lot of breaks in the footage here. I do apologise with that. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Irina's dad. So if you speak to him and then you give him the letter, he's going to give you the sacrificial twig. Uh, if you are in an area, you know you're going to die or you're very close to dying and you've got loads of grace, uh, not grace, runes, sorry. Uh, so yeah, give him the, the letter. Actually, you don't need the letter. It's afterwards you give him the letter, sorry. Um, yeah, so speak to him. He'll give you the twig. So you equip that as a talisman and then when you die, you'll keep your runes. Uh, it breaks. It, it goes away once you've done that. It's a one-time use kind of thing. If you die, it goes forever. But you don't lose your runes. So um, if you've got loads and you think you're going to die, it might be worth just kind of sticking it on. And I'm going to jump over and do the grace point. So that kind of... There, where we spoke to that that guy then, it seems like we've finished Castle Morn, but we actually haven't. There's quite a lot more to do. Uh, if you don't hop over this wall or don't know about it, then... Uh, you will have missed all this extra stuff. So we're going all the way down to the uh, the sea now, or the lake. I don't actually know whether it is a lake. If you drop down this side onto this wood, you'll see a stone sword key, which obviously we'll want to grab because we're using loads of those. Use them all the time. Yeah, they got these these slug things. They they you don't need to kill them. They do take a lot of FP to kill. I mean, oh, come on. They are weaker to magic than regular uh, hits from a normal weapon. But they are just annoying. They, they probably wouldn't catch up with you if you just carried on going. But yeah, I'm just getting rid of them anyway. I've got weird mouths as well. So don't go and grab that item yet. Do not grab it yet. Just kill this guy in the corner first. And then lock on. Look above it and then lock on. There's one of those slime things that drops on you. And uh, could potentially kill you, depending on how much health you have. If you are struggling with health, of course, if you find that you're dying, then uh, yes, do upgrade health. And then also don't use this talisman I put on at the end. But if you get in, you'll get used to it as well. If you are new to it, you will get used to uh, movement. Enemy movement is the, the main thing with all Souls games, is learning how enemies move. How much of a gap you have between their attacks, you know, how much distance, if you're, you're safe to cast, you can fit one more cast in, or if you need to dodge. I've played this as the third, fourth time, whatever the hell time this is now, uh, fully all the way through. This will be the fourth, third time, sorry. Um, and I still get it wrong, of course, you're going to see it. But uh, yeah, it will. You'll, you'll get more confident with it. Big one there, so quickly take him down at the end. We're going to go up here and get the Twin Blade Talisman. Um, it's a talisman you would wear. I don't know if you'd even use it if you were wearing the Twin Blades because there are better ones you could be wearing. But uh, it helps. I think it does extra damage on successive attacks, the Twin Blade one. And then slide down. If you want to know how to slide, you just hold circle as you go down a ladder. So basically, run. And then we're going to go even further down. So that looked like a dead end, but it wasn't. We keep going. Tarnish Golden Sunflower. Probably never use it, but there you go. It's a crafting item. Uh, there is... I, I, I should have healed at this point. Not that it particularly mattered. Uh, but that was just a, one of those beetles that... Scarabs, isn't it? Not beetles. Same thing. Scarab that um, gives you your flask back. It's not. Uh, it's not got anything else in there. In its sparkly dung. Slowly make your way down here, but watch out for the big gap in the middle. And we're going to carefully drop down here. So drop down one, grab the uh, smithing stone, and then drop down two onto another one. I thought I'd missed, but there you go. Uh, the main one you want to kill here is you've got rats. There's actually th another three rats down there. 
uh, and then there's one of those horrible weird looking enemies underneath as well so that's the main one you want to kill usually the rats will appear they'll start walking underneath you investigating what's going on but none of them heard what was happening so I, I have to drop down I'm trying to find and figure out which side they're on I think that they're actually a, ahead of me right now I'm just going to have to go for it on a and uh, yeah yeah there they are uh, yeah, I, I switched. Uh, yeah, I do that sometimes. I'll switch my casting, my, my auto lock, because I know the spell is going to travel through the enemy that's in front of me and kill him, and then I'm ready to lock. I'm already locked onto the enemy I want to kill afterwards. Didn't work that time, though, because uh, it was too low, it was too short. Um, that was a whip. It was a weapon that we just got. The whip is a pretty funny weapon, actually. It's not terrible. Uh, it's not. It's got really um, long reach on it. So if you want to mess around with that, it's a, a funny weapon to use for a bit. You've got a big one to the left here asleep, and you've got a small one dead ahead. Give it a small one and be ready to take this down, this guy down quickly. If he does the roll, which I think he does, it can be a problem. Oof, that was close. If you don't want to fight these two, you can just drop. If you're not interested in throwing daggers, you can actually just drop off the side. You don't need to fight them. We'll go down. The jellyfish you can kill, but they're a bit like the turtles. The tortoises, sorry. Don't do it. Unless they're red. If the jellyfish are red, they're going to attack you. If they're just white and floating around all peacefully, just, just leave them. They don't give you many um, runes, so there's no need to kill them. Sombering smithing stone around the back. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, we're going over here for some fire arrows. If, if you don't want them, you don't need to come and do this because you'll use FP killing the big giant crab, which will appear. I'm just trying to get him to appear now. Come on. There we go. Interesting. In does the, uh, the spit first? They don't usually. And uh, it's going to be boss time. Uh, this boss actually becomes a normal enemy later on. Uh, he might seem quite aggressive and oppressive, and yeah, he doesn't he doesn't give you much breathing room. So that's why we're going to use a summon because why the hell not? It makes the whole game easy, doesn't it? Um, I do get really lucky. Uh, I missed like I was talking about getting your timing right with castings. I completely mess one up and nearly die. But uh, it's really, really lucky, this one. So this is a uh, optional boss. We're going to get a trophy for beating this guy. And we're also going to get one of the legendary weapons from him as well. So as soon as you walk through, bring in your summon, whoever it may well be. Still using Engval at the moment. Who is pretty cool, actually, the way he just kind of, I don't know, swings his pike around, whatever it is. It does take a lot of damage as well, which is the most important thing with these summons, is if they're able to take a lot of damage. This guy's right in the way, behind the graves now. Uh, if they're able to take damage, that's the most important thing. Like, now, I think the, the timing is now. When do I time it? Now, that was terrible. Absolutely terrible. How am I not dead? I have no idea. I literally have no health there. That was terrible. Um, so yeah, if he does rush you, just wait for the, the summon to get his attention again, and then just carry on, and uh, it should have been a lot simpler than that. But there you go. Leonin Misbegotten, defeated, trophy and crafted blade greatsword. You might want to equip that greatsword for a minute, even though you can't use it, because it's uh, a hell of an impressive looking weapon. And that's it, now Castle Morn is complete, so we can... Uh, we can now leave, we'll do some levelling. I think I do get up to 11 here at this point. Yes, so we've got 11 and 15. and can now use the Uchi Katana. And uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to equip it in a moment. Uh, I will just change its Ash of War while I'm here. I'm going to change it to a magic one. So if I change the Gravitas and put it on uh, onto this sword now, then uh, that will make that magic and make it scale with magic. Just equip it, and we are good to go. Doesn't scale particularly well at this point, but it's uh, it's fine. I like the 
the uh, move set more than anything. So yeah, if you want to go up to the Church of Ella and upgrade it now, you can do. Uh, I will go short, actually very shortly. So I'm going back to Weeping Penin Peninsula, the top of it here. Uh, here is the Knight. Knight is over there on the horse. I don't want to deal with him. Actually, I could have done it probably quite quickly, uh, but no. Just change it to morning. My excuse for that is that it looks better on the recording. <laughs> Uh, no, it's yeah. We don't need to kill him. You get, uh, I think you get from that when you get a mace or something like that. Uh, there's no particular reason to kill them all, apart from runes and a, a, a weapon you'll probably never use. Uh, right, we're going to head following the wall now. I'm just going to continue up this path. We're going to explore the rest of the peninsula now. It's a lot quicker than uh, the other side, even though it is bigger. So look out for now. Yes, yeah, so we've got yellow ember, and look out for these rats now. They're going to find them everywhere. It, stop it! I need to cat, give me a chance. <laughs> he was not giving me a chance, was he? Uh, so this this sword, I do like it. Obviously, it's longer than the sword we were using. Uh, it's it seems quicker. Almost, it's probably not. It just seems quicker. I don't know. Maybe it's the move set part of it why I like it, and it also. Um, inflicts bleed damage so you kind of saw it on that uh, that rat then as I was hitting it uh, it's there's an invisible bar that builds up like it does with you uh, on all enemies now start using the sword you're gonna st start inflicting bleed with every hit that you do it's usually about the third or fourth hit uh, you'll just see a pop of blood from the enemy and they will lose a lot of life so that's kind of bleed playing out and then it will build up again and pop and build up and pop and that kind of, kind of thing it just helps with the damage so we are doing we're still scaling with magic but we're still doing bleed damage at the same time so that's quite that's why I like using this sword to be honest and it's uh, quite easy to uh, use with our build as well we're not using sparing too much strength or uh, sorry intelligence to but to use it by uh, Upgrading Dex and Strength. Anyway, got them in the end. Uh, right, Alien Village. I'll show you where we are in a moment. But yeah, uh, I was locking on in those trees just to weed out the rats. And we're going to go and get... Uh, yeah, just watch out. There are more rats around here as well. Just going to get this, uh, this wooden shield in case you want that for any reason. There is a new... There, you see that plant there, that bright red one. That's... Uh, a new craftable material or crafting material. The Eye of Yilu, Yilu, Yiluf, Yiluf. It would be, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's where we've come. We've come down there along the wall, up and round, and we're at this uh, this church now. And uh, like most of these churches, it has a sacred tear in its inside, and that's why we are here. A couple more guys, and then we're going to get the swirls, so we know we're done with those. Yeah, the Kalu Baptismal Church. So it's not a Church of Marika, this one. A few smaller rats. You obviously the big, see the big one at the back. Save him for last. Give him a couple of gravity uh, rock slings. And you've got the Flame of Frenzy here, which is an incantation. Not something we will ever use, but if you do use them, there you go. Uh, and then Sacred Tear, which we definitely will use. It will improve the potency of our... Flask, Crimson Tear. So I'm going to head north now by going round. And at the northmost point of this cliff edge, there's a few enemies there. They're the flying uh, ones we were dealing with earlier. If you keep heading north, you'll find uh, a grace point. There's no. If you never got any plans of coming back up here, then fine. You don't need to do this, but uh, I thought I'd just show you where it is. And uh, that's where we are. Now we are going north still, but it is, I thought, um, we'll try dropping off, but it's too high. <laughs> I couldn't find a point where we could actually drop off. So I'm just using the sacred tier here. I was going to teleport, but then I thought, no, we will try and drop off. I wonder if we can, because it, it's literally not that thing over there. That, that um, tower is where we're going to be in a moment. You're going to see where we are. But this is too high of a fall for us to uh, to drop down, so we'll just teleport. There, Castle Morn. 
ramparts and now we're going to head off the other path so we're heading north again so not down the main path we're going to split off to the left and look for some water now I do flap around here with a sword a bit usually I just run past these dogs but last time I did it because <laughs> come on <laughs> uh, last time I did it they actually followed me uh, to the grace point which is just up to the left hand side so I thought I'd just uh, kill him quickly. I thought there was one still there. I had no. I don't know what I was doing. Don't ask. Trina's lily. You've got plenty of those now by now, and you'll probably never use any of them. Here it is. So yeah, they will try and jump up and get you. That's why I killed them this time. Uh, don't go too close to that tower. That's that tower we saw from up top. Uh, there is a guy on top with a um, with arrows. So don't go too too close, you'll get hit by arrows. There's no need to go up there, unless you want to, obviously. Uh, right now I'm going to go to the Church of Ella and just upgrade our new sword. Strength armament. So we can only go to plus three on here. So plus one is two, uh, four, and then six. So can't go any further with it. So plus three is maximum on that one with any weapon. Uh, we'll need to go and do the rest using uh, Smithing Stone 2s over in uh, Round Table Hold. But because you can't go there yet, potentially, we won't do it. We'll wait until the beginning of the next one. So look for this ruins, these ruins, and this is where we're heading now, off to the west. These items here are completely useless. Some string and some gold-tinged excrement. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so strange. Uh, but yeah, it's a demonstration to show you these guys pop out of the ground. It scares the crap out of you the first time it happens, to be honest. Because they scream at you. You don't know what's going on. And then we're going to make our way through this... Uh, these ruins. There's no need for us to get this uh, this staff we're about to get because we do already have a better one and by the time we're going to trade this one in we'll have a better one again so we don't need the demi-human queen staff but if you want to use it then you can it's here so we're going to get to the other side so we might as well kill all these guys in here there is a, a large one so if, as you go through here just watch out for uh, a daddy demi-human <laughs> He is it usually he's up and about, but he's not actually sleeping in the corner. He's round here. He just looks like a pile of bones. There he is. So the ones that we fought in the cave before, uh, in the first video, second video, was it first or second? I can't remember now. It's not even that long ago. Uh, when we fought two of them, that's just what that was. That's how easy those guys are now. So this is where we are, just in case you were wondering. And then there's the Demi-Human Queen here, who does do spells. Uh, it's not a boss fight, this. But if you kill her, you're going to get the staff. So just throw three rock throws at her, and you should be good. And uh, once you do that, all the little ones will surrender, like they did in the cave as well. But, because they would do the same to us, we will kill them all. You're going to get Crystal Burst as well, which is a sorcery. Uh, you may want to try that so as a sorcery. Uh, and another thing as well is when I'm recording this, it's, uh, what is it, May, uh, after the game's released. I did want to wait a while to do this guide because they are changing the game's strengths, balancing and all that. Some spells might be better than the ones I'm using now because they have got better or the ones I am using are worse. I was trying to avoid that, but it may still be the case years down the line, who knows. So, uh, yeah, be aware of that. Experiment. You're not tied to uh, the build I'm doing at all. All you need is uh, to fully upgrade a weapon with regards to builds, and that is it. You can do that with any weapon. So I'm going to grab these uh, herbers here because we may use them for the, the bolluses. There's a tier here which you will use to mix in the, um, the Wondrous Physic. Maybe. Probably not, but it's there if you need it. And then we're going to make our way up. And round rather than going across the bridge we're gonna go up and round ignore this big plant we don't need to bother with that they never give you anything good and then 
follow the path up to another church for yet another sacred tier and it's not even the final one we're getting in this video we're gonna get three in this video and into a squirrel as you do it is really satisfying to do that glintstone staff it's quite rare to find that as a drop actually uh, yeah, it's really satisfying to, to f switch between the enemies and take them all down in one hit like that. So, Church of Pilgrimage. Get the Sacred Tear. Level up your flask. And then we're going to go into a, uh, a tomb. More skeletons. Yay! So, add uh, the amount it increase. Increase the amount it replenishes. Can we level? No, we cannot. Nowhere near. So I will drop back onto doing uh, mind and intelligence now. So this is where we're going to head south along this main road. So underneath the tree is where we're going. I mean, you've got to, haven't you? When you ride past an enemy, you have to swipe at them and see if you can hit them. <laughs> Heading south, look for this broken pillar here. And the door is quite well hidden, actually. It's hidden behind this uh, pillar. Uh, the reason we're going in here is for a legendary summoning ash. So that's where we've come down, and this is where we are now. It's actually a very straightforward uh, tomb. They're not called tombs, these are they? Catacombs, same thing. It's spelt the same almost, isn't it? Apart from it's nowhere near. Uh, yeah, so pop that, obviously. Uh, this we don't need to go into. You need to use a stone sword key. There is nothing of interest for us in there, so just leave it. Of course, if you want to, then go for it. But <laughs> don't waste your stone sword keys if you don't have to. But if you have extra ones than I, more than I do, then uh, feel free. It's just a uh, nomadic warrior's cookbook. Nine. I want to say nine. Again, we don't do crafting, so no use to us. So, in here again, skeletons. Confirm the kill. Make sure you keep doing that. Grave Glove Wart two, twos now. Uh, watch out as you come down here. So there's a couple of skeletons that going to be dead ahead. Left and right. Take both of those down. But watch out, there's a skeleton uh, that will appear from the right hand side. He hasn't woken up for me this time, and I'm all over the place. I don't know what I'm doing with the camera there. That was fun to watch, wasn't it? So gra I'm grabbing these glove warts as I go around. There he is. He is. These ones with the sword are quick and gets you pretty quickly. That was not going to hit him, obviously. That's that one down. What do we get? Human bone shard. Great. Yeah, I thought there was one in this corner. Is this a grave? Is a grave that one? Like I said, we just need one. But if you want to go for multiples and upgrade all of them, then uh, you're going to need more than one. One, one. That was a bad timing, wasn't it? I should be using the sword more. I really should. I've <laughs> just upgraded it. The sword is really good double handing as well, so if you want to switch to that, if you are out of FP, then double hand the sword, it's actually a lot better. Now in here you can see I'm all over the place with the camera, I'm, th I'm sure there's another skeleton in here. I can hear one, I'm pretty sure I can hear one at this point, I keep checking. Nope, no one there, okay. Right, bow and arrow to uh, drop this thing. So switch, double hand, fire into, wait so you can see it and then fire into it. And uh, then... We, uh, we get attacked from the right hand side so there was one, I knew there was <laughs> but um, yeah he wasn't coming around the corner was he, he was hiding, he was just looking around the corner wasn't he, waiting until I was not paying attention quite annoying there is one hidden in the corner here you'll need to wake him up might be the most satisfying noise in the world <laughs> the parry sound from the souls games or the stagger sound should i say so yeah what's your there is a guy here there's one up there on the top and there's one skeleton that's going to appear on the floor as well uh, here he is 
So watch this thing and the fire thing. If you hit it, it's going to come back up. And if the enemy hits it, it's also it's going to come back up. So just be aware of that. That's why I'm trying to draw him out a bit so uh, he doesn't do that. And then I'm actually going to jump up here and get this one next because if you go through that room, this one will wake up and start throwing fire bombs at you, and it's really annoying because you can get chased by four skeletons in a moment. So uh, yeah, go up here and kill this one first. And then you can just ride this thing back down. If you don't need a grave glove wall, or if you aren't interested in prattling pate, <laughs> you don't, if you don't know what that is, that just sounds random. Uh, yeah, you don't need to come in here. There's going to be four skeletons that will wake up. Now, what I should have done, in retrospect, is run down here and quickly smack this thing so it starts the fire up again. But I thought, four skeletons, I can deal with those. And then I saw them all compiling around that corner and I thought, nope, this was a terrible idea. Um, and I keep hitting each skeleton once, <laughs> so none of them actually going down. But we got there in the end. One of them's woken back up. Yeah, use the timings on that. You've got quite a while before they wake up. Yeah, so what you should do is just run back in, hit that thing so the fire starts and sprays and uh, kills them all. And there's Prattling Pate. Thank you. So what, <laughs> what you might think, what the hell is that? Um, it's an item you can use out of your inventory and you basically talk in the game. So it's for when you're doing co-op or something or whenever, PvP, whatever. Uh, you can basically say thank you. So there's a few of them in the game. There's all sorts of different ones. They're quite funny to hear. As you walk into here, be aware that there is going to be a guy with a bow and arrow ahead, and then one behind you will appear. So, uh, yeah, back, back out. I don't have none of these traps, thank you very much. Another final glove wart there. That's another two. And uh, this is the switch for the boss. And of course that banner will appear across the bottom, so I didn't actually pick that flower up and just dropped off. <laughs> I was cancelling the banner, uh, but there you go. Didn't need it anyway. I'm going to run back to the start, grab this on the way out. Don't know how I missed that one. And then uh, go into the boss. Now this boss is horrendously easy. It's ridiculously easy. I've never actually had it walk towards me. I didn't actually know what it did. Usually you can hit it with two... Uh, rock slings and it's dead but it actually avoids and my intelligence obviously isn't as high as it was it actually uh, avoids it and it hits me and I'm thinking Jesus Christ I'm going to die here I had no idea that these guys did all this uh, miss with the sword which is great, I don't have enough time to do the rock sling and uh, yeah these things are quick so uh, yeah let's just get rid of that but usually you just walk through the door, two rock slings dead, done, off you go but uh, anyway, you're going to get the legendary Ash here, Luatel, Luatel the Headless. Uh, I may actually switch to him at the start of the next video. I don't do it in this one. Um, I'll check how much FP he takes. Uh, I've not used him before, but he does look like he might be better than the one we're using. Uh, so I'll try him. Because I don't usually rely on summons as often. Because uh, you get better at the game if you don't. <laughs> so if you do want to get better at the game... Don't rely on summons as much. Uh, although that probably would have helped in that instance there. It would have took that little bit of health off that uh, it allowed it to survive. But there you go. So I'm leveling back up there, the normal things. And then we're going to go up to the minor Erd tree here and just get a couple of quick uh, tiers and take another boss on the Erd tree avatar. Uh, it's usually Erd tree avatars in front of these big minor trees. Big minor tree, that makes no sense. But you know where I am on the map. These guys are really easy. Uh, you can obviously get them from quite a distance. Uh, of course, if you want to bring the summon in, then go for it. That's going to help as well. Uh, I should have. I had one more cast in me. I should have cast, and it would have st staggered it further away and allowed me to get more in. But there you go. Bad timing on my part again. Uh, so they just have that big axe. Yes, they have a really long reach, but they have a, a horrendous wind up. Really, really slow. Telegraph them with really long. Uh, so you've got loads of time to prefer, prepare your dodge and things. And uh, do that extra cast if you need to. I'm dead. Really simple. 
no point going up there. But uh, we're going to get the Opaline Bubble Tier and the Crimson Burst Tier. Two tiers that uh, one of them is actually not too bad. I do change to that one, uh, the Opaline one. It uh, it negates. So if you're really stuck in say a boss fight and you're struggling for health, you're going to use your your flask in your in a pinch if you're running low. Uh, and that Opaline tier that you, the next hit you take, uh, damage doesn't happen, so it can mean life or death so it's one we switch out quite quickly but it, it's good to know that what it does so now we're going onto the west side of the peninsula show you where we are I'm gonna run down this left this left hand side now all the way down here and do all of these this first ruins not of interest you get a winged scythe I mean okay if you're gonna use it great it, but we won't <laughs> but uh, yeah just show you as we're going through, might as well, because there's a chance you're probably going to go in here, uh, exploring around, and yeah, these guys, these rogues, usually they don't wake up so quickly, but uh, this first one's not too bad, but if they're at a distance, like this second one, these perfumer rogue types, uh, they fire bolts at you, and they fire them in quick succession, like four or five in a row, uh, they can kill you in one, it's not one shot, but it feels like it. Uh, if they all hit you, it's it's they're quite dangerous, so watch out for them. Uh, and we're going to get the winged scythe, which I'll never use. And it's not one we need for a trophy or anything. It's only legendaries that we need for trophies. Uh, but passing through, might as well. And then we're going to go and do this uh, boss fight, this jail here, this ever jail. Uh, we're going to get the Radagon's Scar Seal Talisman. Now, this is the one I was talking about that will artificially increase your strength and dexterity, uh, along with quite a lot of other stats, but it means that you take more damage. So it's uh, it's up to you. You can try it out, but I'm going to use it personally. So you do need a Stone Sword Key to activate this jail. Uh, if you don't have one for whatever reason, hold off, and then we're going to find uh, a a merchant shortly who will sell three and grab one off him from there. Right, the ancient hero of Zamor are quite dangerous if you let them get up close. So that's why I'm backing away there. Uh, they do stagger quite easily and they do move quickly. So what you want to do is just keep your distance. And even if you do have distance, he can do that, which is quite annoying. Make sure you dodge out of that quite quickly. But yeah, the most in important thing is to keep your distance while maintaining aggression. Keep on top of him, but keep a distance at all times, and uh, you should be fine with this fight. He does go down pretty quickly. You'll get a couple of staggers in using Rock Sling. Uh, so there's one more. And then the final cast. So as long as you stay away, like you can see how quickly he closes the gap. Uh, or she, who knows. Um, so yeah, stay away. That's what you want to do. And then you get Radagon's Scar Seal, which is a talisman. And I will quickly show you what that one does. Because we're going to use it, or I'm going to use it. It's up to you whether you do. So if you go down, uh, you're going to see the, the numbers on that go blue. So it's three extra vigor, it's three extra endurance, three extra strength, it's three extra dexterity. It's pretty good. Uh, but you will start taking more, I think it's 10 to 15% more damage. So it's if you if you think you can get away with it, then uh, it's it's up to you, but I'm going to use it personally. It, it does, obviously, it's uh, the equivalent to, what is it, 12 levels? So, yeah, we're not going to use necessarily use the strength or dexterity. Dexterity does increase our casting speed, but strength we won't use. Um, so, it's up to you. I like them, personally, there's quite a few of them in the game. Uh, yeah, so, mess about with it, you can always change it back, don't worry. And that's why we, we hard leveled strength and deck so we could use the sword in case you didn't want to use it. So, yep, just grab the sacred tier here in this next church. And obviously we're going to use that to increase. So that's three increases in this one. And we don't even have a large FP bar yet. So, uh, yeah, we'll catch up with that. So I'm going to switch my... my I don't care about the stamina one. Uh, so I'm going to switch it to the opaline one, which uh, significantly negates damage. For that just that one hit after you use the flask. The next hit will just not do anything, uh, or pretty much nothing. So it's a good one to have. And then we're going to go down here 
and get uh, the ambush shard sorcery, which is really, really good. <laughs> Actually, it's one of the, one weakness that uh, sorcerers have is anything with a shield. Um, and NPCs, they dodge our attacks quite quickly and easily. Uh, and obviously the ones with shields just block them. But we have the ambush shard, which attacks from behind, so they don't see it coming, and obviously they can't block it with their shield. It's really good. You'll be using it more often than you think. Uh, right, so there is this is all poison here. I'm trying to avoid it by skirting the edges and killing the enemies. If you go through this door here, it, this thing's going to appear, this blob of heads. Uh, if you do a couple of um, rock slings at it, you should be pretty much dead at that point. You see it shooting up into the air. Don't worry, from this distance, it's not going to get you. It's just uh, around it, those drop. So don't worry. Just let them all drop down. And we're clear. So yeah, this is a uh, poison swamp, so if you ride torrent, you'll be fine. Just having a look around to see if there's any items or enemies. There is one over here. Uh, they do fire crazy crossbows, uh, so do watch out. I think they've got three or four of them. He has dropped something as well. And my It has piqued my interest, and it's only five arrows. Great. But what we want is actually down here. So this is where we are in these ruins. And if you open up this door, you're going to have the ambush shard off to the right-hand side. We will equip it shortly. Uh, there is um, a sorcerer here. Don't kill them. Just leave them. You can talk to them. They'll kind of whinge a bit and that. But, uh, yeah, don't kill them. Just leave them. I thought it was Selen to start with, but if you go back to Selen, she's still there. Uh, there is a guy who hunts these sorcerers, and this is kind of the deal here. This side quest happens all here. Uh, so we're not doing that, so don't worry. All we want is the spell. And then we're going to head south even more so. You will hear the donging of the bell <laughs> the whole time you're around here. We'll we'll actually use that temple later on, that church, that um, turtle, tortoise, whatever it is, temple later on. We don't need it yet. So that's the only reason we're coming back to Weeping Peninsula is to use that. So purchase uh, the lantern. It's really helpful and a uh, stone sword key, as many as you can from him, really. And we're just going to do the one, and remember that he has two more, so if we need them, we'll come back. And, uh, yeah, I, after purchasing the lantern, I completely forgot to equip it, so I'll do that at the beginning of the next video. Uh, you put it in your, your pouch, and it means we don't need to get a torch out. We just turn it on, and it's on our hip, and that uh, emits light, so it's better than having a torch, because it frees up both our hands. Um... Yep, equip the ambush shard. You should have at least one slot ready for it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Weeping Peninsula done. If you want to go and explore more, go for it. If not, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.